Hi there, today we're going to be taking a look at Play Out One's audio engine and seeing what it's all about. My name's Alex and I'm joined by my air colleague and a familiar face here on the YouTube channel, Mr. Dave Briley jones Hey Alex, good to be back again. Looking forward to talking about audio engine. Absolutely. And it's something that I think I know we've been um, dealing a lot with as a team over the last year or so, because it's been such a big part of, of, of version five since it shipped. Um, but for anyone who hasn't used it yet, what's the audio engine all about? Yeah, so audio engine's relatively new. It's only been here sort of uh, just over 12 months. We shipped it in version five last year. And what it allows you to do, and the way I kind of explain it to people is you're decoupling the engine, the thing that plays the audio from play out one. So previously they were one thing. Um, what we now do with Audio Engine is they kind of get separated. So you've got Play Out One, and then you've got the engine. What this allows you to do is run, first of all, more than one engine on one machine. So if you've got multiple stations in the same organization, you can run all of them on one machine, specs and obviously hardware permitting. And then what Play Out One does is it can control all the different audio engines. So you'll see in a minute when we go do the walkthrough, there's a nice little drop down where we can select different stations and also have a look. What it also allows you to do is kind of centralize everything. So in a traditional sense, whereby you have a control room, you have play out one in there, the audio comes out of the control room to the board. Now, what you can do is you can put an audio engine on a computer in a racks room. And if you've got audio over IP, such as Axia, Wheatstone, or Dante, the audio can come out of the server into the control room, which means that control room can then be used by any station. It could be the rock station, it could be the pop station, it could be the country station. It doesn't matter because the audio engine is consistently playing back in the racks room, but the control room can be used for multiple brands. So why don't we dive in and have a look on how the audio engine works. So here is the audio engine. This is what it looks like. Obviously, the colors may be different depending on how you have your station set up, but it's a little application like this. We'll make it a bit bigger. And as you can see here, we have a section of the log that you can see, a couple of players. And then we can cycle through different things at the bottom to see uh, X log, uh, full screen of the players, and then the inputs. Audio Engine has eight inputs, which makes it super, super fantastic for satellite stations and stations that need to take different audio inputs. Say goodbye to the broadcast tool switcher. Well, maybe not, but maybe. Um, right, let's go and take a look at the settings window and see what we get in here. So this is what you get with Audio Engine. You get 16 buses. Yes, 16 different audio outputs. And each audio, uh, or, or should I say, each bus can be something different. It could be a physical audio out. It could be a audio over IP out. It could be an internet stream. It could be a recording, so like a logger. And it can also be a live mic. So here's me looking at our internet stream bus. We've got this configured here. If you wanted to, you could have this going to 16 different internet streams if that's what you really want. Uh, we're using a mix of stuff. So we've got it going to um, a cable, virtual cable here as well. But look, you've got direct sound, Wasapi, a file output for recording. The abilities are endless. You can also uh, add a DSP or a VST into the buses too. And that's the same for inputs. So having a look at the inputs here, we can have eight inputs. So if you've got audio over IP again, uh, you've got a, a satellite for Westwood One or a satellite for Premier, they can all come in here and then we can control them. We can send them to different places. Using salvos, we can have different functions. So uh, if we're relaying a sports game and we're not allowed to stream that, we can set up a salvo to stop that from happening, uh, which is very, very useful. We've got settings in here to cache audio. So it's super, super quick. We've also got options in here uh, for the VST and DSPs, as I said. Isolation mode comes part of the audio engine. So if your server does go down, you can still broadcast. Very important. And then there's some other general settings too. So audio engine, it's really quite a compact little application that really does punch way above its weight. And if you're not using it, your radio station, you really should be. Absolutely. And one of the things that I've really found useful with the audio engine is how that if play out one was to close, the audio doesn't stop. Your station can avoid falling off air just by using the audio engine. Yeah, we've all done it. Sometimes by accident, sometimes not accident. Um, here's play out one running in a control room. Uh, let's close down play out one. There it is. It's gone. Oh no, we're going to go off the air. No, we're not. Because as I said at the start of this video, we've decoupled the engine from play out one. So the engine will still keep running wherever that lives. The engine, let's not forget, that lives either on the PC 
that uh, Play Out One is running on, or it runs on a server. So it's completely separate. The audio is still going to play out even though a user has closed down Play Out One. So let's now open Play Out One again and let's see what happens. Do we have to do anything special for it to pick up? Well, the answer is no, because the audio engine is consistently running. So when Play Out One connects, it will show you where everything is up to as if nothing ever happened. And that is something that our customers are really finding useful. It just gives you a little bit more redundancy. If the users do by accident close the application, it's still going to work. Fantastic. And as you say, whether the, whether it's an accident or, you know, something that's gone wrong with a machine, you know, the fact that Play Out One, the application is now basically just a control surface for the, en the engine, which is like the brains of the operation. I think that's going to be a real game changer for stations. Um, one of the other benefits of the audio engine that I think people sometimes can overlook is how many previous applications it's now consolidated. It basically becomes the brain of your radio station in a way that previously multiple applications had to do the same jobs that now audio engine can do on its own. Let's take a quick look. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So where you may have ran live stream and studio monitor, you don't need those anymore because they all live in the audio engine. Studio monitor used to control live mic. Well, here is live mic in the engine. Uh, consolidates, as you say, the applications and makes the footprint a lot smaller. So we've got our live mic here. We've got our send bus and our receive bus. And if we need to stop and start it, we can do by just clicking the little green microphone. There we go. A user has connected. That's how we know if a user is connected or not. We can kick the user off if we need to from this panel. Uh, and it's very, very simple. It's so powerful, so easy. And having live mic centralized with your Play Out One audio, it makes sense because if you are broadcasting live from location, the chances are you're also broadcasting the Play Out One audio as well. So you need to be able to have that. Now let's go into the settings window and have a look at the buses in a little more detail. So here's our matrix grid. And if I just go and configure bus E here, let's have a look at what options we get for a file. So what is a file? Well, it's a recording. So I can set a folder for our recordings to go into. This could be a logger. So perhaps we're recording the output of the radio station, but it could just be a logger for the live mic audio. Using the buses, you can route anything to anywhere and so this logger could just be for incoming live mic audio. How you cut this, how you slice it up, it's completely up to you. That's what you know makes it so powerful. What I love is you can also clone buses as well. So if you've got something going out on your bus A and you want to send that to a stream, just clone the bus. Uh, that way you don't have to double up on DSPs and VSTs. If there's already a VST on bus A, just clone bus A and use it. Uh, the saves button flashing, that's a really useful feature to say, hey, the changes you've made here won't take effect until you hit save. So that's why that's flashing. On the right hand side, you see the blue dots. Those control what functions in Play Out One get routed to where. So we've got no players showing at the minute. Looks a bit weird, doesn't it? Although I quite like it. A bit naked. Uh, let's go into the settings window and let's show some of those players by just changing some of those blue dots. So let's have those four players back again. Let's have a look. There we go. That's more like it. I like seeing me play as myself. The other thing I really just wanted to touch on is inputs. We have a lot of satellite stations um, as customers of Play Out One, and you, you may have a broadcast tool switcher. You may have uh, other switching uh, devices to bring in those audio streams from those satellite providers and obviously play them out on the air. With Audio Engine, you can feed them direct into the Audio Engine, which means we can utilize salvos. And salvos allows us to route different things to different places with the one click of a button. We can set up a command in Play Out One that can route a certain satellite to a stream. We can de-link uh, the audio coming in from live mic to a stream. Why would you want to do that? Well, perhaps you're taking a uh, soccer game or a football game and you don't have the rights to broadcast that out onto the stream. We can do all of that inside Audio Engine. Very, very simple, very easy for us to do. There's so many possibilities with Audio Engine. Um, if you are not using it, I would really recommend you do. You can find out more and talk to our support team about upgrading to Audio Engine by emailing support at air.com. Absolutely. If we've not convinced you in the last few minutes, do take a look at support.air.com and look at the audio engine documentation. It shows all the features that are available and give you a full rundown of how it works.